So as some of you may know, we actually went to Colorado back in February with the whole family. And for my deodorant, I take like an old degree container, like an empty deodorant container, and I melt down my deodorant and put it in there, the deodorant that I make. And I did a fresh one to go to Colorado, and I was certain that I packed it because we went through the entire condo like five times and did sweeps to make sure that everything was out of drawers and all of the jazz. And I am certain that I packed it. But when I got back to Washington, I couldn't find it. And so instead of just, you know, making new deodorant and doing that with another empty container, I'm just not wearing deodorant and um, walking around the house looking in random places for where my deodorant might have been stashed when I got back from Colorado. It's weird. And it has literally nothing to do with what we're doing today because we're not making deodorant. We've done that on the channel like a number of times. And so you can go check those out complete with recipes and all the things. I'm just frustrated yet again today that I can't find my deodorant because it would be nice to have. I will tell you what we are making in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 285 of 365 days of soap, and today we are finishing up the lavender soaps for the summer line, and we are doing it with a very interesting scent indeed, and it's going to be the last one, and so we've been playing around with the different ways of pouring this for like a faux funnel, and then how you kind of get it into the mold, so you don't have to do complicated cuts to make the... And so today's the last day and the last test of that. And ultimately, then we get to decide which one we like best. So that's super fun. So let's go to the video. We will talk about the colors I used and the scents and all the things, you know, where we always do that in the video. Okay, final lavender soap. And by lavender, I mean I mixed lavender mint from nature's garden with lilac from Mid midwest fragrance uh because the other three that i did they were proper blends smelled nothing like lavender and and so that's also what i wanted for the the fourth to to say lavender but not smell like lavender so the lavender mint by the way for from nature's garden delightful freaking scent it's so good. I've been using it for, I don't know, five or six years. And I go through, I don't know, well over a hundred pounds of it a year. It's very popular. Uh, the lilac I just picked up from Midwest Fragrance because I needed to put something else in my cart. And, um, cause I don't like odd numbers and I really like lilac. So that's what I did. Uh, Kaylin Clay dispersed in water for this into the entirety of the batch, like we have done for all of these things. And um, then the soap batter itself will be dispersed, or distributed, rather, into three equal parts. And uh, colored, you know, properly at that point. And the colors that I am using are a Love Bite from Mad Micah's as well as Bright Yellow Raincoat, also from Mad Micah's, and Pow Pow Purple, again also 
from Mad Micas. So now you know. And there's that. Uh, the actual pour of this, it well, it's going to be another faux funnel-esque thing, right? But with a weird twist because we've been playing with, well, I don't even know that you would call this a faux funnel. Ultimately, still what I'm going for is the lamination. So the layered look, kind of like a wood grain, but not a wood grain because these colors and these scents do not say wood grain. And also it's summertime, so I'm not doing a wood grain. So, but it's not actually a faux funnel at this point. I think what I'm kind of doing is a variation, my variation on a kiss pour. So as far as I know, it's not named. Maybe you guys can help me name it. Let's go check out this pour so you can do so. Okay, so first up for this pour, I am taking uh, the pink on one side and the purple on the other and pouring it equally into the Pyrex. So there are equal parts, pink and purple, in the Pyrex. See that? Isn't it fun? It's cool. The reason why I decided to do this with uh, pink and purple is because purple is Soap and Clay Kidlet number one's favorite color. Pink is Soap and Clay Kidlet number two's favorite color. Yellow is no Soap and Clay family member's favorite color. So that's the one that goes in the middle. That was my reasoning. That was it. That was all. Once all of this soap batter has ended up into the Pyrex, I will then take the yellow and pour it at sort of high so gravity can do its thing. So pour it kind of high so it'll drop down to the bottom of the Pyrex, right? And it will essentially fill the middle crevasse, as Soap and Clay Kidlet number two likes to say. So we have a uh, pink, yellow, purple in the Pyrex to then pour into the mold. Isn't it cute? I, I, I quite like this. I found this pour to be very satisfying to pour. And then we're just gonna take it and we're gonna pour it into the actual container just right in the middle where we did, like how we did yesterday's, right? Just, just in the middle of the mold right there It'll be great. It's going to be a good time. We're going to love it. And then it is going to be sea popped and gelled. So put in the oven so we can get gel. And I'm interested to see what this does in a, uh, well, in a, a loaf mold, because usually I just do like a kiss pour in a slab. So, you know, it's going to be fun. Let's go uh, check out this cut and see what all of these bars ultimately end up looking like. Okay, and on to the cut, and it's a shiny soap, and we definitely have some cracking on the top, and we also have a little bit of cracking on the side. Might have been overheated, which makes sense, because that oven was working all day long for all of these soaps, really, and so it's a thing. But very interested to see what these swirls ended up doing. And look at that, not at all the lamination and whatnot that I was going for, but a very fun little swirly pattern. Here's the problem. These particular soaps on this particular side of the mold, they're all pink and yellow. The other side, because we poured it in the middle, they're all going to be what? Yellow and purple? Probably. So, arguably wildly different than, you know, the pink and the yellow going on this side. But still very cool. You've got some nice feathery, wispy things going on between the pink and the yellow. It's fun. That's almost, there's a little bit of purple showing up in that. Let's see what the middle one does. Cute, okay, so we've got some purple. Oh, cute, cute, cute. All right, so this is when it's going to start shifting to primarily purple and yellow, right? But the little wispy, feathery things in the middle, that's cool. And that exists whether or not all three colors exist within the pour, regardless. It's kind of the nature of the kiss pour. You, you have the feathery, wispy things in every single bar if you're doing it within a slab. As you saw, I did not do it in a slab. I did it in a loaf mold. And it's interesting. I don't actually know, going back to the conversation we had a couple days ago, which bar, probably that bar, or one of the first bars, I would photograph for the website to give a good indication of what kind of all of the bars look like. 
but I'll be damned if from one side of the loaf to the other side of the loaf, there weren't wildly different bars. They all smell great. The, the lilac actually did a really great job, and I knew the lavender mint was going to because I've been using it for years, but fun. That's the end of the lavender soaps, and weren't they all super fun? Which ones did you like the best? And there they are, the final in the lavender soaps, and I don't know which one I like the best when it's all said and done. These ones are very cool. So were yesterday's. Actually, they were all very, very fun, for sure. And so, I don't know. I, I think they're all very unique in their own way, and they were a lot of fun to make, and a lot of fun to make with you. If you guys are interested in purchasing these, uh, as soon as I decide to put them on the website at soapandclay.com, you can find them there. But for now, it's probably not going to be until July that I release these because we've got other soaps that I want to get out first. So there's that. If you are interested in seeing what other themes we do, I know we will be starting Christmas in July in July this year so we can get all of our fall and Christmas soaps kind of squared away together at the appropriate time to start thinking about it. So, you know, subscribe. You can stick around for that. That would be excellent. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thanks for sticking around for all of that because you're excellent and I appreciate you. I am out of here for today. I'm actually going to go make some s'mores today, come hell or high water. So that's definitely on my agenda. Yes, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.